I just returned from a 10-day cruise to Alaska. It was my first cruise, my first trip in two years, and my first live quilting event. We stopped in five separate ports and four of them had quilt stores. So you know we had a lot of fun. So stick with me and I'll show you what I bought. Good morning, everyone. It is nine o'clock on the day that I leave. I am supposed to be on getting on my ship at 11 o'clock. And of course, all vlogging needs a crisis and I have one. It turns out I have a couple of printouts I forgot to send to the printer here. And I am desperately looking for a printer <laughs> before I get on the ship. So <laughs> here we go. So what are the chances? It's Sunday morning, downtown Vancouver, this one's shut, but this one luckily was open. And once I figured out how to download my files from my drive to this printer, I was on my way. With that crisis averted, we made our boarding window. We took a tour around the ship. and then watched us leave port from our balcony. That night, our quilting group had a cocktail gathering where we all got to meet each other, and then we all went to dinner as a group as well. I think the thing that I was most nervous about going into the cruise was seasickness. On day two, I was teaching a full day class, and I did not know how I would do it if I was queasy. But the quilting goddess was shining on me and gave me flat seas for the whole day. My tech worked out, the kits I had prepared looked good, and the participants really worked hard. It was wonderful to see their color confidence grow. The first port of call was on day three in the town of Ketchikan, the salmon capital of the world. My husband and I had signed up for a duck boat tour, but first I was going to take my camera and go to a quiet part of the boat and vlog. My microphones were giving me grief, so it took me much longer than expected. Well, this video has a little bit of a jump in it. Um, yes, you can see we are on the boat. We have been sailing and this is the next morning. It's been lovely, absolutely lovely, but just getting used to how things are done differently on a boat. When I returned to my room for my passport, not only did I find that I didn't have my key, I realized I got a text from my husband and I realized he had left the boat. Thank God I can still run. <laughs> I had to run down six floors to customer service and get a new key, then run back up six floors to get my passport, and then back down another six floors to get to the gangplank. I know it wasn't my husband's fault, but it was a good 15 minutes before I could speak to him. We had a tour of the town and a little bit of a boat ride. Then it was time to dump my husband and find the quilt store. Whale of a Tail is in Salmon's Landing, which is a short walk from the docks. It's on the second floor. They have a great selection of Alaskan-themed batiks, prints, and panels. And this is what caught my interest, this panel of Alaskan animals. It also had a matching border print, and I immediately thought that I could make a fast and easy row by row quilt. Aren't the otters cute? I also saw this ABC fabric with an Alaskan theme. Honestly, I love ABC fabrics for baby quilts. I'll use this up quickly. And Dawn, the owner, will cut your fabric in meters or yards. And she gave us all chocolates and a bag too. And then it was time to get back on board because the ship was leaving. Icy Straits is a tourist stop for cruise ships near an old salmon cannery. 
And as I had my morning coffee on my balcony, I had this magic moment as I heard the whale before I saw him. It was a fun day taking the brand new gondola to the top of the mountain. There was a ton of snow here and we saw so many members of the crew that had never seen snow before playing here. They were making snowmen, having snowball fights, taking photos and sending videos home to their friends and family. But my husband and I were on a mission. We were taking the world's largest zip line. You can see here how far down it goes. It was so much fun. It was about 60 seconds of pure enjoyment. If they had asked me to do it again at the bottom, I would have done it in a second. The cannery is no longer in operation, but it houses an interesting museum, as well as gift shops. I know many of the other members of our group were going on whale watching tours or excursions to see wild animals like bears and moose, which they thoroughly enjoyed. And after dinner, I indulged in a little whiskey tasting. And In Juneau, we had our first group excursion. This was a bus trip to the Mendenhall Glacier. We were a small group of about 14 because many people had chosen to take either the plane or the helicopter tours up to the glacier. We enjoyed a nice walk to the waterfall right next to the glacier. You can see everything's just starting to bloom. And I began to sniffle with allergies I didn't know I had. On the return to the ship, we stopped at Rain Tree Quilting. This was a quilt store for the locals. It was a great store full of fabric and supplies. It sold sewing machines too, and the staff was so friendly. Here, I bought this blue muscle fabric and these colorful pebbles. I think they will work well with the panels that I had purchased the previous day. I was very tempted to buy more fabric, but I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to buy any fabric that I could buy back home. Juno had a second quilt store right near the docks. So we dropped the husbands off at the boat and headed off as a group to Changing Tides. Jan had a lot of nice patterns and fabrics. Her Alaskan fabrics were batiks, prints, and several panels. Many of her patterns were laser cut designs for raw edge applique. I had a really hard time resisting this beauty. It's a block of the month. I think if I get my current block of the month done, I may call her up and ask for it. This was the day I gave up vlogging the trip. I didn't have a proper bag to carry my equipment and I had some components that were being very glitchy. And then back at the ship, I didn't have a strong enough connection to upload any of my footage to my team back home. So I just put it aside so I could relax and enjoy my vacation. This was my favorite day of the trip. We had just perfect weather for the train ride up White Pass. We could see for miles as the train guide told us about the history of the Klondike and the thousands who came to find gold. Snow was quite deep still in the pass. Luckily, we all wore layers. 
After the train, our bus gave us a tour around Skagway. I want to say it was brief, but that doesn't mean it was rushed. Skagway just isn't a big place. The Russian Taylor Quilt Shop is in the middle of the town. And this was another stunning shop. So many kits and patterns. I really wanted to buy at least three, but I contained myself. I grabbed this panel kit of a sewing circle of Indigenous women, and I like the bright colors. My fellow travelers, Norma Bush and Anne Sinat, gave me this matching panel, which I'm going to incorporate in the back. We all rose early to see the Hubbard Glacier, and it was another day of perfect weather. Because it was early in the season, and Alaska had received a ton of snow this year. There was a lot of ice in the water still, and we had to keep our distance. The ship served us some hot chocolate to keep us snug. Afterwards, I was very lucky to get a tour behind the scenes. I got to have a look at the bridge and the laundry room, the restaurants, and the control room. It takes a lot of people and work to make this ship run. I taught my second class that day, a half-day workshop on symmetry. As everyone worked through the exercises and experimented with their fabric, you could see that they had aha moments with the results. We had one last gathering to say goodbye as some travelers were not going to Denali. And then it was a night of packing. We had to get up at 5 a.m. to get breakfast and muster before we disembarked. Up until now, we have had one amazing trip. The ship's accommodation was wonderful, good service, food and entertainment, and the crew was very kind and courteous. The next 48 hours in Alaska, not so much. I best describe it as a series of hurry up and wait, which made zero sense. We had the most beautiful weather and absolutely perfect views of Denali. But we were unable to get the bus to stop so we could take photos. We had this fixed timetable to hurry up and get to the next destination, only to stand around and do nothing. Luckily, we were transferred into the care of the Denali Park Service for our tour of the park, where the park ranger was so knowledgeable and showed us wonderful points of interest. Then it was another rush back to Anchorage. Unfortunately, when we arrived, it was too late to hit the Colt store, and it was shut on Sundays and we had to jump on the airport shuttle at noon, so we didn't have the time to get to the quilt stores that were farther out. Next time. It was a long day of travel home. We went Anchorage to Vancouver, then Vancouver to Toronto, but you know who was glad to see me when I got there. And unfortunately, I did get COVID. And it hasn't been the best two weeks recovering. But I'd do this cruise again in a heartbeat. Between the ship and the crew, Alaska and its wildlife, and all the wonderful new friends I've made, these memories are going to sustain me for a while. And every time I touch these fabrics, I will be reminded of the new friends I've made. With our common love of quilting, it was easy to get to know one another. Even the husbands had something in common. We built so many memories together, and of course, we had a great time shopping for fabrics together. I think we're gonna do this again. Take care, and I'll see you next time.